Pecha Kucha 106, uh, Wolf Logo and Outlast. I've got to say, I do find it increasingly difficult to uh, stay in Adobe Illustrator and try and do more graphic design. Uh, this week, I just... Uh, I was just kind of sick of this whole playing around with text and you know all all this all these things I don't really have an interest in and I you know I eventually ended up looking at a lot of kind of animal logos um, you know I watched a tutorial of of the guy making this the wolf one in the top right hand corner he basically just drew it on paper and then he just took it into Illustrator and made it blue <laughs> uh, so you know I I just messed around with like. You know, it's just assume there's a, a studio called Lupine Studios or a film production company or something. I think the silhouette on the moon is obvious. I think the gradient fill in the background is not quite right. Um, but then it might just be that I've wh whacked it on the plain white background. I don't know. Uh, and then I just thought, let's let's uh, go a bit deeper. Uh, so I, I started sketching wolves in Manga Studio. Uh, I found it kind of therapeutic after spending so long messing around with like illustrated tools because it's not drawing. To be an illustrator, you're not actually illustrating. You're making graphic design and the two separate things. Uh, I cleaned up my sketch uh, with the intention of making this my underlayer in Illustrator that I could like kind of vector up. Uh, it's not, you know, his mouth's a bit crooked and the ears are off but uh, you know this this you know me I'm not a precision kind of guy I'm just trying to <laughs> keep my head above water so I, I uh, took that image and then used it to kind of create a black silhouette upon which I would put all the uh, extra stuff on top the idea was to kind of lay a white on top of black on top of white and then you know build everything up so I lowered the opacity of the, the silhouette so I could kind of work through it uh, and of course in Illustrator I've got to break everything up by layer bit by bit because it's so easy for things to go wrong. Uh, so I, I was working on the eye and like, you know, the eyebrow and the outline of the, the eye are two separate things, two separate layers locked to make sure that, you know, the selection tools don't pick the wrong thing while I'm trying to edit them. Uh, I mirrored the eye, uh, copied it, then I moved on to the nose and the mouth, and like it's, it's just the simple thing of having the, the two parts of the, the, the upper mouth, having a line that overlaps as it goes into the nose, that's the kind of thing that will mess you up in Illustrator, because it wants to it wants to auto-correct and all kinds of stuff. Uh, so you know now I'm trying to apply block white on top of the black, so I can then apply details in black on top of that white. This is probably ass backwards uh, to how a, a proper designer would do this, but you know how it is. I'm just feeling my way through these things. Uh, that's the only way to be authentic. Uh, so then I add the fangs and I add a little bit of, um, you know, whisker stubble, I guess you would call it. I actually didn't add whiskers. I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. But, you know, I walked away from this when I was done, not when it was done. <laughs> Illustrator will always probably be a frustrating experience. It just becomes less frustrating. Uh, you know, I think I did the years last. Uh, by this point, I was thoroughly uninterested with preserving any degree of artistic, you know, integrity. I won't say merit, but you know, I you know, I was not interested in it being perfect. It was just a case of it being being done. Uh, and this is this is the wolf. All layered up with some shadow and stuff. Uh, it, yeah, it's a lot of it needs redoing, uh, but you know me, I don't, I don't redo. I walk away. But there's a good base there uh, for a, for a graphic wolf illustration. It's not the worst thing I think I've I've done in the last month in Illustrator. And all the while I was looking at uh, you know pictures of wolves right from the start to the end because you know I don't actually draw wolves. It's not like I have. You know, I you know, I animal ear shapes. You know, you draw them wrong. It's a different animal. That's a serious thing. Uh, yeah. So then I you know added a kind of like a quite a thin font because I feel like that's that's a kind of a, a trendy font for a for a production company. And then uh, I just I just added a circle and then used the the width tool to give it a bit of a line variance. And by this point, you know, I, I thought about adding texture to the moon, but I just thought fuck it. You know, gradients didn't work. Let's move on. Uh, so Outlast, I'm still watching Let's Plays uh, from the same guy who did the uh, Enemy Within, the Evil Within Let's Plays, Survival Horror Network. 
brilliant game. I own it, but I'm too scared to play it. So I watched this guy play it. A, guy go, a journalist goes into a mental asylum to investigate wrongdoing by the staff. Uh, all of the plot is kind of explained in text dumps by either the journalist or he finds used documents uh, in, in the facility. Discovering the narrative is a very good way to make the most of the video game medium. I'm a massive fan of that kind of thing. And this is what the disclaimer at the start of the game. Uh, you know, your only choices are to run, hide or die. That's the last line. That's how you make a horror game. If you just give people shotguns and laser cannons, that you know, it's not scary. You can have all the jump scares in the world, but horror should be psychological. It shouldn't just be things with fi uh, finger knives. Uh, Outlast Whistleblower. Uh, the journalist in the, the base game gets an uh, email from a guy who is the whistleblower. And this is this guy's story. What happens to the guy that tells the main character he should show up to this place in the first time? It has a very surprising conclusion, which was far more interesting than I thought. I've started watching Outlast 2's Let's Play. I remember hearing that it's not as good as the first, and it's pretty obviously not. The guy spends... This time there's a guy in the middle of, like, buttfuck Alaska. I don't know where he is. Somewhere in America, uh, in the woods, there's a cult, and somehow something I don't know. <laughs> uh, some, uh... You know, if you haven't watched Don't Hug Me, I'm I'm scared. You really should, because because of, of choice lines like this. What's that? A tasty snack. You don't want to eat a snack like that. Greedy to eat all that. You'll end up with your teeth all grey. Do 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 do. Do 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 do. Do it healthy. Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, brought to you by the MacBook Auto Text Reader. You're fucking welcome. That's the end of Petra Kucha 106, and I will see you next time.